Hey everybody, this is Green Bean stopping by with another video after our big win against the Tennessee Titans at home at MetLife Stadium. I'm still buzzing, I'm still in a good mood, but as is pretty standard with the Jets, some news came out this week that attempts at killing our buzz, let's say, is a buzz kill. To a degree, it all depends on how you look at it. But this week, we got some news on our disenchanted starting safety, Mr. Marcus May. So some news came out this week that Marcus May was involved in a DUI traffic accident, including hitting another vehicle, fleeing the scene, and some other goodies. Here's what we got. Now, we just to get us up to this point, I want to remind everybody that just last week, Marcus May was injured in practice, and he's going to miss three or four weeks, and his agent, the lovable Mr. Eric Burkhart, came out in a response to Ian Rappaport's tweet and said, Marcus May will be back just in time for the trade deadline which everybody's psyched to hear. We all know what that means. We have become proficient at reading between the lines as Jets fans. So Eric Burkhart is insinuating that Marcus May is very unhappy, and they've chosen the tact all through the offseason and this season to kind of throw the Jets under the bus, say negative things, be a part of articles about Joe Douglas being the worst GM, blah, 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 blah. I'll never work with the Jets. I don't trust them, and on and on and on. That's the chosen method of dealing with this from the Marcus May camp, and that's the way that they've done it. But now we find out that back on February 22nd, May was involved in this in this incident that which is got it's gonna cause some problems. So here's what we got. I'll give you the report as it stands right now. May traveling by himself in a 2018 Mercedes allegedly crashed into the left rear of a Volvo while driving north on the Florida Turnpike at 7.33 p.m. There were no injuries, the traffic citation says, but the driver of the Volvo, and I'll leave her name out of this, you can find it if you want, filed a civil suit and is seeking in excess of $30,000 by per the court filings. Now, that's all, that's just hearsay, right? That's just some lady said, hey, this is what happened. But so the cops responded and pulled May over. It says May was found in his car just north of where the alleged accident occurred, according to the police report, which also stated that he was unresponsive and unaware that he hit another vehicle. So when I heard that unresponsive, did that mean he was sleeping in the car or something? I'm not exactly sure. I think it's more that they were trying to pull him over and he was just not responding. That's what I think it is, but I could be wrong there. He was unaware that he hit another vehicle. His eyes were bloodshot, his speech was slurred, and officers smelled alcohol, per the report. Officers also saw vomit on the driver's door and floorboard. May told the officer that he had not been drinking and that the smell was from two days ago. He declined to take a sobriety test and provide a breath sample. There was damage to his Mercedes that corresponded to the Volvo's damage, the report said. So, it would be just hearsay without the damage on the car, the vomit on the door, and the alcohol and the slurred speech. Now, May, re May refused to take a sobriety test, which years ago it used to be that if you refuse a field sobriety test, particularly the breathalyzer, that it was an insinuation of guilt, but they have been able to beat that in court uh, numerous times, so I think that's still the smart move uh, if you if you are in that situation. I think that's still the way to do it. It's hard to defend against, but at least it's defensible as opposed to once you blow in that stick, that's what it says. It's recordable and all that. So again, we can't prove that May was was drunk, but there's a lot of pieces that paint a picture that he might have been. Now, here's the interesting thing as far as from my standpoint. The Jets were not made aware of this. So May had this incident go down in Florida. His, you know, obviously May's people knew about it. Most likely his agent, the agent, uh, has not said one way or the other if he knew about it. I'm, I'm leaning towards he knew about it. So they tried to get everything done in the most aggressive manner possible because there's more than likely going to be 
discipline. Okay, it could be discipline uh, in the ways of a fine. It could be a suspension. It could be numerous things. Who knows how you know how how bad he could go to jail? I mean, I don't know how severe the charges are going to be or the disciplinary reaction from the NFL and from the law. This shows how bad of an agent Eric Burkhart really is. Number one, he's known as a scumbag throughout NFL circles. He's thrown people under the bus numerous times in his career. He has no fear of doing that. He's kind of slimy on that on that regard. So he has a, a situation where he knows on the back burner that his client is going to be in some sort of trouble. So he's asking, he's trying to push a trade. He's trying to get his team away from the general manager that's not playing games with them. Maybe there are lots of general managers that will, and Eric Burkhart wants to get May into one of those situations where maybe he can take advantage of, manipulate, or at bare minimum, at least get a sweeter deal from an agent that'll work with him. Joe Douglas is just not playing games with this guy. That's my take. We don't know all the, all the reports. So Marcus May's agent, Eric Burkhart, knowing that, is going on, goes out to the press, throws Joe Douglas under the bus, uh, gives these little inside reports to Ian Rappaport, the Jets only offered 80% of the contract, blah, blah, all these things that Jets fans have gone and responded to emotionally for a long time. Joe Douglas is a cheapskate, Joe Douglas, Joe Douglas, Joe Douglas, he's not taking care of his own and all that sort of stuff, which, hey, on some level, it makes sense. There's, there's foundation, but we have to remember there was never any statement from the Jets, never. Joe Douglas never came out and responded to anything, which is kind of his M.O. He doesn't work through the press. As a matter of fact, the press, nine out of ten times, you know, moves that Joe Douglas makes, they don't even know until it's filed. That's how quiet and tight-lipped Joe Douglas is. So all this 80% stuff, all the disrespect, that's all coming from May's agent and is obviously very motive-driven. But the tact is interesting, knowing that you have this disciplinary stuff that you're about to deal with wouldn't you think a smarter method would be to be incredibly respectful show marcus may and his team as somebody that works with you somebody that's very forthcoming they didn't report it to the nfl they didn't report it to the jets so all this stuff i think this is just one more misstep from this eric burkhart who clearly couldn't get the job done to protect his client who's going into a franchise year is a little bit older. You know, he's 28, 29, so he's not old by any stretch, but as far as where guys get premium level contracts, he's getting to the end of that window. A little bit older for a safety that with his experience in the league, and you would think that it would have been a priority to give this guy some financial security because he has none. And look, he's injured. We don't know how bad this injury is going to be. It could be exacerbated. We don't know. And then Marcus May is guaranteed nothing the year after this. So Eric Burkhart was unable to get the financial security for his client. That's a failure on the, on the agent's part. He should have done everything he could to work this out. Even if it's a little bit less, you take it because you get, you know, long-term financial security. That's the give and take. Knowing all this, he still couldn't get the job done. And what he's done in response is make Marcus May as unattractive as he possibly can. Now he's an injured guy with a pending suspension, most likely, and he's going to be trying to get a trade. So the thing that bothers me is he just ruined his trade value. That's what he did. He ruined it. If we were going to get a third or a fourth or whatever it was for Marcus May, now knowing that he's going to get a four-game suspension, at least, I'm just saying that, that's just my own thoughts. Um, he's going to get a suspension most likely. That's going to make him less attractive. And Joe Douglas is going to once again have to work magic to get any real value for Marcus May. Uh, but it's interesting. I'm sure more will be revealed. What are your thoughts, man? What do you think about this Marcus May thing? He's not exactly everything that we think he is, is he? He seems like this really respectful guy. We all like him as a player. That goes without saying. But it's not exactly the way it's been presented. Maybe the Jets have a little bit more knowledge on these things than a lot of us, and that's why they're handling things the way they are. But let me know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're enjoying our victory week going into London. You're allowed to be happy, Jets. Jet Nation. Don't let them tell you otherwise. I'll look forward to talking with you again. Go Jets.